And we're back from break. Back from break. Back from break. Welcome to part two of whatever the fuck episode this is going to be on. It's on an episode, though. Yeah, it's going to be on an episode. I just don't know That's which. That's the cool thing about podcasts. We just put it on an we episode. Just, we could put it anywhere. Plug it anywhere, put it anywhere. Put it anywhere. Do it anywhere. Edit it anywhere. Stick it in anywhere. Yeah. Pack so seats work. So, Jeff, we're, we're, huh? we're, Jeff, we're joined by two, soon to be three additional people. Goose, the crowd grows Goose every does, time. Goose doesn't, I'm just kidding. Goose <laughs> does count. I'm, just, I'm fucking with you guys. He just whispered you don't count, Goose. So, Goose the, the, is back again. Goose is always back. He's always back. I don't know if he, if, do we call him back if he's on every he has week risen. almost? Yeah, we could do whatever, yeah. Yeah, Goose is good, though, for the show. Oh, here he this, is. Look at this handsome Goose devil. is here. He has risen. Goose, say hi. What up? That's so him. that's Goose. And then next to Goose, you kind of heard him on the Red Cypress episode, but he's back. The man oh, of the show. The man of the show, yeah. The decent. contributing the contributing factor here. We have decent here. I like drinking. <laughs> and then we are joined by a guy who briefly introduced himself to me at the bar. I was like, you know what? I want you on the show. The beauty of the at the bar podcast <laughs> the beauty of it, yeah. is that we just get people from at the bar. Yeah. Exactly. Hashtag at the bar. <laughs> we have Chad here. Chad, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing tonight? We're, Very we're good, fantastic. Man. So obviously, you're new to the show. We haven't met you other than other than five minutes ago. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I'm going to school to brew some craft beer at the uh, USF St. Pete program, uh, like Brewing Arts. It's uh, it's about a year program, mostly online, and then some uh, four months in the brewery. Very educational in science. And uh, also, I'm uh, brewing some uh, home brew, five gallons at a time, taking it easy. Uh, the way to le- do it. Learning, yep. learning hand and grain, and uh, just reading books and studying. Thank when you, you uh, when you home brew, what's your particular favorite style, or what are, what are you working on? Are you doing a little bit of everything, or do you what's your what are your you know influences? Well, I, uh, I noticed our water is a little bit easier to work with, with, you know, the amber to brown style We've beers. talked about that before. Our, our water in Florida does play way more to malts than it does to hops. Yes, yes. Uh, malt for beers. And uh, so I do a nice little brown ale. It's a chocolate coconut with some cocoa nibs and toasted coconut. And that's probably the flagship beer. We should have tried that against last time. <laughs> yeah, we should have, yeah. This is like the chocolate coconut craze now. Everybody, Everyone. you got to do it though, because yeah, it's freaking do. delicious. So, your 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 beer, it's like zymology, I guess is the correct term of it. The brewing, learning how to brew beer. Yes. Uh, zymology. As it, well, the first step in brewing beer is going to be reading some books and doing doing some of your own education and getting a very Belgium. deep understanding and completely planning out your beer before you even decide to brew it. Right. So that I know, I know USF just I had that new program, uh, brewing beer. I know they've partnered with. Are you seriously pour, spilling Cantillon? <laughs> oh my Jeff, god, Jeff! What the hell, man? Suck a butt, douche. So I know you guys partner with or will three daughters. Uh, three I know, daughters is out in St. Pete. I love that brewery. Very good. That was friends Mike's, of the show. That's Mike's uh, first, first at the bar. That was actually at the bar. Yeah. Yeah, that's and not uh, my bedroom. That's or living room. Main, uh, <laughs> The main program is Three Daughters is very heavy in that program. Also, we do some work with Cigar City. And, uh... Just like fucking up, man. Well, I'm just so, taking liberties with John's Cantillon as I pour out full glasses <laughs> Everyone's of getting full glasses. So, that's, I, I mean... I know if he wanted to save some. I mean, I, I despise USF because I'm a UCF alum. Yeah, go, go but, Knights. Yeah, but regardless, I mean, I think... We're a perfect record, man. Can you, uh, can so, you give us the bill? Um, I think it's cool that USF is doing a program like that in Tampa. Tampa, we've said numerous times on the show, is like the heart of craft beer in Florida. So I think that's really cool. I mean, you're not, we're not going to get any students other than Chad over here who's studying beer at USF. I doubt it. No, uh, for the homebrewing festival that we mentioned earlier uh, at a different episode, earlier or later, the homebrew or this episode. Um, <laughs> we have at uh, we have the UCF Homebrewers Club on board with us, but we have not had USF, and I didn't even think that a Tampa school would want to send people over here. Well, it's an actual like degree, correct? Yeah, for it's the a, it's a certificate. Oh, it's a ter- certificate. So you room. you want to go into brewing? Is that what you're? Yes, I, I plan brewery. on I starting a nano brewery That's as a small family things. company. Okay, cool. And you work at? Is there if we drop where you work? Yeah, that's fine. okay. You work at what brewery in, in Tampa? It's called Escape, and that would be in Trinity, Florida. Trinity, Florida? Yes. 
we're gonna touch into that doctor shed because that's my jam. Don't pour it off. Well, you can pour. I mean, whatever. So, Jeff, you got to stay on topic. Well, what, what's the topic right now? We're talking about. Um, well, one, he's drinking a new new doctor shed, which I want to ask him, interview him on. Romantic on Chemistry IPA. But we're talking about he wants to open his own a brewery eventually once he gets his certificate. So beautiful. I think it's an awesome idea. I think. Uh, I think. The problems that we've seen with Florida breweries are, are going to exist even stronger when you get to that point because I think we're going to be at the the pinnacle of the of the bubble in Florida. Uh, so you got to be careful with what you do. But at the end of the day, quality beer will win out. Always. And, and if you don't appeal to the masses, if you make your beer for beer lovers and you have your brewery your tap room is cool, your staff is good, your atmosphere is right, and your beers are quality. You'll survive any bubble wave, freaking dip, any, any whatever. Yeah. You'll, you'll survive it, and we're, we're going to see it because the people who are starting to close their doors already, as we've seen, some breweries closing their doors, it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue to happen, but it's the people who are brewing the, the fruit wheat beer, the crappy IPA, the run-of-the-mill pale ale, and they're all doing oh, the same shit. thing, and those are the people that aren't surviving. So, uh, from I mean, you you obviously and just it, it's so simple, but you understanding what our water plays into means that you have a lot of experience already in what you're doing. You have a lot of art in your craft because we've talked about it before. There are too many breweries in Florida that want to be a hoppy brewery because hops are trendy, but they don't understand what Florida brewing is because you can't use Florida water and brew a decent IPA anymore. You have to either chemically alter it, get your water from somewhere else, or you got to be malty, and that's the facts. And it, it's it's just the way our water is. We're at sea level, you know what I mean? So it's like our water doesn't play into malts. I right. mean, into hops, it plays into malts. Right. Well, uh, one thing you can do to be very uh, – have many styles of beer in Florida is to have a reverse osmosis filter, and that's something we plan on doing for our lighter style – fruity wheat beers is to use mostly reverse osmosis water. I think a lot of, a, a lot of breweries do that. Well, we were talking about uh, on another episode that we were talking about uh, creating a Florida style. And, and that's, that's you come to Florida because Florida is the number one state in, in the country for tourism. So you come to Florida and you want to have Florida style beer. So we were talking about creating a Florida style and actually a couple brewers and some people that were very high up in the craft beer world mentioned doing a fruity Berliner Weiss with a little bit of a sour note as a Florida style beer, something that no one's done before. And you can't do that particularly well with what our water naturally is. But like you were saying, you filter your water properly or you chemically alter your water properly and all of a sudden you're open for sours. You can make you can make some really awesome and great stuff. The water is too hard, is that the problem? Yeah. It, the it's nat- probably the water. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's I don't know. I'm not a brewer, but I know that alkalinity. Speaking speaking yeah. <laughs> on behalf of trying Florida beers for a long time, the IPAs are always lacking, and the multi beers always come through very well. So decent. Yes. Yeah. We we were packing everything up after our beer battle. I, th- my and, and my, they, I'm totally my fault. I was late. I was going to be here earlier. Hey man, regardless, you brought, you brought the whale to the party. So I want you to introduce what made us unpack everything and set this up again. Yeah, it, this is like two times now. What the opportunities we're getting through this? Are yeah, this insane. has been one hell of a week for us. <laughs> Chad just happened to be here. He gets to try a freaking uh, a, a beer that, yeah. that well, a beer that decents. Introducing. Okay. So back in September of last year, we decided. Well, the wife actually decided we were going to go international. And that Belgium was a place to go. Now, of course, we also went to Amsterdam because, duh. <laughs> <laughs> we ourselves. Yeah. So we, we had quite a few of the, the breweries, and this is the only brewery that I actually brought stuff back from because a lot of the breweries, we've got it here in the States. Um, so that, I, That's crazy to me. It, so did you see the pictures that he showed you? Let him introduce the beer, but he'll I've, show oh, the pictures. I've, I've, seen, I've seen those pictures. So these... Just introduce the beer. We'll go into the pictures because it's <laughs> it's absurd to me having brewed a lot of great big breweries on mass distribution and seeing these pictures makes me realize how amazing this brewery actually is. It 
So humbling. So we do have a bottle of Cantillon. It's uh, Rosé du Gagne. I'll post a picture. You're I good. can't fucking pronounce it. You're good. Rosé de Gambruenus. So it was one of four bottles that I brought back. Um, that just saving for an occasion. Then I saw your post for, on Facebook saying that you guys had a little. We had the goose. It's their base Man. goose, but it was. Uh, it is. It, no, it's for fantastic. a goose. It's, it's unbelievable. It, it's stylistically. It's, it's perfect. It's simple but perfect. Yeah. But um, this. Uh, so what I was saying before, uh, Cantillon, John is showing me pictures of his trip. They're brewing on a system that is ancient. Um, it is literally hundreds of years old. They are running. Well, that's their thing. They are running their mash out of out of their tons <laughs> with with leather conveyor belts. Right. Um, I mean, this is they're they're crank hand cranking their mash out of their tons. They're. I mean, this is an ancient system that is unbelievably oh. modest for the quality of beer they're putting out, and they're still doing it with. Uh, and I believe majority still yeah. naturally yeasted. It's all still actual wild yeast strands, and they're yeah. killing it. And, and and I have not had a beer from them that hasn't blown me away. The, all they do is sours, correct? I believe so. Yeah, pretty much. And they have, they, I mean, they have spider webs, Jeff, in the corner that they will not touch. Yeah, house spider. Yeah. So, and everything's open. I all feel really bad now that I have this sour that I still enjoy from Red Cypress, but I'm sitting with it with a Cantillon next to it, and now there's no chance that this beer has of holding up. <laughs> you know. Jeff, you're not drinking a sour as we keep going over. <laughs> it's their saison. <laughs> yeah, for the love. Keep, yeah. Get it right. Saison is a sour style of beer. Yeah, goose idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> so the color it's on a, this is like not as super sour. red. I'll give you that. Well, it's a rosé. Y- yeah, I mean, if, if you didn't know better, I mean. It looks like Hawaiian punch, fruit punch. Shall we? In color. Yeah, shall we? Cheers. Let me clutch Cheers my palate really quick. Cheers. You better get on this, Jeff. Yeah. Is it bad luck to cheers an empty glass? Because I definitely just did that. It holds up after a year. Yeah. Oh, I like the fact it's a little warm. That's the other beauty of their beers. They age. Extre- sours age well. Yeah. But these beers particularly age extremely well. I've got one more <laughs> bottle at home. We'll save that for a special occasion. You shouldn't have given one to Goose. Yeah, he gave me one, so it's two years of age. I think I might hold on to it. Have you seen the puppy dog eyes on that guy? It's it's. Well, this one's from nice this one got bottled uh, May thirteenth of two thousand fourteen, so this has age on yeah. it too. Yeah, I uh, I mean I've only known John for like way longer than Goose, but I didn't get any cans. Whatever, you Whatever. know. Well, we're let's getting pick some week. Saturday. Well, let's pick a week where he's not here, and I will bust out the West Velvet. Ooh, a little Ooh. Westy. So and then we'll, we'll we'll go we'll go face to or head to head app twelve and I don't get a lead I've already done anymore. It. I've already done it. It's not a fair. We'll, we'll we'll go into that later. Wait. So, so what? let's not go into it. So Westy versus app twelve. Okay. Comparable. I did, I they did. taste the same. You yeah. think if if you did a blind taste test, you wouldn't be able to tell? No. Westy's better. No. When I had it, it was for the Prestons of Beer Chasers, and the Westy that we had was three years old, yep. and the ABT twelve that we had was like brand new. Brand new. That's so, not fair. The Westy, I think I, I've got is well, it was when they when they did the one time they did the import here. And that was years ago, yeah. And that was at least four so, years ago. So to continue, Westy did win out of the AB12 in comparison, but just because it had three years on it, like you got you got more flavoring out of it than a fresh AB12. Just a lot but more. The difference between the two were close to almost nothing. They taste it almost the same. So, Chad, what are you thinking of this Cantillon? Oh, wow. Well, uh, You don't like sours, do you? Well, I think you guys might have said that this beer was aged for one year. Is that correct? About a, a little over a year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, this beer tastes like it was aged longer than that. It is so smooth. There is, <coughs> it is not a lactic acid bomb at all. <laughs> Right as he coughs. <laughs> You're right, Jeff. <laughs> well, no, that, it just surprised me, man. Damn. Don't get me getting all up in my business. So I, I know to go over it, like you get, I get like a burst of sourness in the front, and then it go, and then it kind of mellows out. out. Yeah. So what's beautiful about it is I hate really vinegary sours, and I hate really salty sours. Um, this one has all of the vinegar that I. The, so I like the vinegar flavor. What I don't like about it is when it locks up your jaw and you feel like you're about to get heartburn. 
right up. That, that back of your jaw yeah. pain yeah. that comes with a lot of poorly made sours that have similar flavor, right. but that it's just not right. This has all of that flavor, and I just drank it, and my jaw did not lock up at all. Palette didn't need that like little sip shock before you go into it. And, and I'm getting into sours. I'm very amateur. I'll, I'll admit that because it's been a, a, a few months of me pushing and pushing and pushing. Yeah. But I've uh, every brewery I go to, every time I see a new sour come out, I'm trying it and I'm trying to get into them. And um, you know, I still don't like Berliners terribly well but i'm getting there yeah. and, and this beer for for all of the like good vinegary what you're expecting from a sour it's not light it's definitely not a light bodied sour but it, no. it has all the flavor of what you want in a sour without that lock jaw heartburn kind of which is hard to do and that takes a lot of dedication that's aging a beer and tasting yep. it every day until that flavor is right i think that's where this beer shines is how it falls off Yep. So well compared to other others in the style. Goose is leaving. He's flying away. Oh, okay. He has, he has, he's hitting the eject button. He has nothing. He's like, later, Maverick. I'm gone. But, <laughs> oh, my God. Goose is butthurt that I corrected him on a Saison. It's still, you're right. It's not a sour beer, but it's a sour style. So, Chad, would you, is this, is this what you were expecting or were you expecting more of a sourness or? Uh, the, the sour on this beer is very clean, uh, just a light, crisp sourness that uh, it's not something to make you pucker or, you know, clench your jaw like you were saying. Yeah. Sorry, John. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like how it falls off like that, it's, but you still it's get again, it's that a, raspberry It's a, It's punch. a very, it's simple yet extremely complex at the same time because it's, the the way it tastes is Victonar-esque. Uh, almost like a Petrus Red, kind of a Flemishy, yep. but uh, it doesn't have that full body, and it doesn't have any of that obscure off flavor kind of it's bitiness. It's not funky either. It's not funky at all. At all. It's, it's just very clean and, and really upfront vinegar, great finish, that smooth as can be. And I, I, I it's it's just another another time I've tried Cantillon. It's now been three times in my life I've tried it, and all three times I've been like yeah. simple yet incredible. Yeah, I mean when we were there, obviously we we sat down and you know did did tastings, and thankfully the wife hates sours, so I picked my four, she picked your four, the, the other four that I didn't <laughs> yeah. pick, and I drank all my of other them. half, <laughs> and. I didn't bring my notes, but I actually was taking notes while I was drinking all of them. And, right. And I found them the other day. I looked over and I was like, damn it, I need to go back to Belgium again. Now, I have a question. I don't know if you, you might remember, but what's the what was the price point when you for this or bottles there? Well, what? Uh, you said it a year the, ago? It's the, it's the or two years ago? Ballpark. It was, uh, it was under 30 euro a bottle. It's like not. Like well under. At, like, that, at that time, that's that's almost thirty dollars a bottle because that's they were you know pretty I even actually, at, I a say year I ago. I walked out of there, all four bottles for eighty euro. Wow, wow, that's but like that's like you, literally twenty dollars a bottle though. Definitely that under a hundred euro though. Oh close. yeah, absolutely. I mean, even even if you get, even if it was a hundred euro, that's in give a, or take a hundred dollar. Whatever in, the in America, the a Cantillon is going to be forty dollars a bottle. At I think the, it's going to be more than that at the minimum, right? So you're yeah. you're talking half price when you're buying it from the brewery. Yeah, and, and you know the bonus was all the workers. They were uh, right as we got done with the tasting. It was it was break time, so they all pulled. They all grabbed their their folding chairs, opened up the you know the garage door. All sat out front and were eating a snack. And they're like, "Hey, American snacks? Sure." <laughs> so we had we had snacks with the workers and. What a great job, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, let's open the door. We're going to eat our, our packed lunches and drink Cantillon, just like it's nothing. Right? <laughs> well, you really can. I mean, the ABV on them is low, pretty, yeah, lower. Low. So it's, yeah, so, so you can drink them all day. It's That's, crushable. Yeah. I hate that because I don't. 5% this one. Because yeah. I don't think you should ever be crushing a beer of this quality, but you do, but it is crushable. When in Belgium, right? <laughs> Shit, I mean, if it was, if it was, if it was like five euros a glass, I'd fucking crush when it all day. Went in Cantillon. So, Jeff, from zero Scale to ten. Scale one to ten. Zero to ten. Knowing nothing gets better than what, 9.7? For That's me? That's what he thinks. But he's, the highest I've ever given was a 9.7 on the show. 
Well, didn't you say nothing gets more than a 9.7? There's been one beer in my life that has gotten higher than a 9.7, and I'm not going to disclose it because it was part of a bottle share, and it wasn't on the show, and I don't want people to, like— Persimmon ho- Hollow. Yeah, it was Persimmon. Hollow Wheeler. No. Uh, <laughs> but, no, I don't I don't give a lot higher than 9.7. 9.7 is, is a, basically a perfect beer. If so you think, you, uh, so what do you got? Uh, I'm going to give this a 9.4 to 9.5. 9.4, 4. 9.4. I, and this okay. is an amateur sourist that doesn't really do a lot with them, and I'm just trying to learn them. But this is, I give this a 9-4. I think it's incredibly well balanced. The body is is high enough that it's not drinking sour air. Right. And low enough that it's not, it's crushable. And at the same time, complex flavor that gives you tons of vinegar but doesn't bite your jaw at all. So I, I, I give it a 9-4, 9-5. There is framboise in this. There is raspberries. Which yeah. is weird because I hate Frambois. Frambois is a lot sweeter than this for me. Yeah, this is, I mean, yeah, this is a good. true sour. Decent, what are you thinking? Zero I, to ten. Uh, or hell, zero to a hundred. Hell, I brought it, yeah, zero to hundred. <laughs> Whatever. I, I brought it back, so I'm partial. Uh, I'm I'm going nine five. I mean, there is there is nothing wrong with this. I think nothing wrong with doesn't, it. Someone who doesn't even like sours. Me. Well, you said you're, 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 well, Ch- you're Chad's getting Well, Chad doesn't like sours either, correct? Yeah, that's well. I I can't say I don't like them now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See, that's what I'm saying. Someone who doesn't like sours. I mean, if they can get if they can get past that initial bite of the sour, they're gonna they're gonna say this is not I do, bad. This is, and this, this is, is, is there. And I would say this would I dare say this would introduce them to other sours. Well, now, oh, I, I, I agree be, with you. I agree be with well you. Well disappointed yeah. afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. But, it's it's like an entry it's level a, that's starter. at the top of its game. Right. So, Jeff, you gave it a nine five. Four. I'm gonna go nine four four slash ten slash, slash five ten. slash ten. Okay, decent. You gave this seven nine seven nine seven. I Chad. was at a nine nine, overall. and I'll give it a nine seven for the Cancion, the whatever the fuck that says, <laughs> Rose de whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna try it again, Rose de Gambrunus, which I think is pretty close. We'll get corrected. Uh, uh, absolutely. But as always. Thanks for joining us, Chad. I hope you had a good time. I had a great time with you guys. Thank you. Deason, thanks for the beer. Alcoholism is Thank good. you very much. It's <laughs> awesome. And I cannot I can't uh, believe I'm I've out, had the I'll opportunity to, to drink Cantillon <laughs> twice now in the last in the last few weeks. Week, and we'll have some more Saturday. So thanks again for listening and watching this improv two. Deason was late, but he bought Cantillon, so let's set everything back up episode. And it was a good good episode, yeah, I believe, good. man. So and I l- broke my rules. You did. So cheers, guys, and thanks for watching and listening. Cheers. Cheers.